right? So here are the knockout kings. We had Naoa Inoue, David Benavidez, Deontay Wilder, Joe Joyce, of course, Javonta Tank Davis, Sabriel Matias, Antoine Russell, or Gary Antoine Russell, Virgil Ortiz, and Arthur Bertabia. Out of these guys, I want y'all to say pretty much who do y'all think has the best resume. And I'm saying that because anybody can have a 100% um, KO ratio if they have some power and they're fighting scrubs. But when you compare these different resumes, you can see whose power really uh, transfers no matter who they're fighting, no matter the level of talent that they're fighting. What's up, Rib Sauce? Like, for instance, Sabriel Matias, he hasn't had a chance really to fight some of the big names, but he's fought four undefeated fighters. He's been in there with uh, guys with all types of power, like uh, Ergashev and Ponzi. When you watch those fights, those dudes were undefeated, and they came with a bunch of power, had a bunch of knockouts. He ate all of their punches, and he ended up stopping them. Someone says Benavidez. Benavidez has a really good resume, but I wouldn't say he necessarily has the best resume yet. But um, what he did to Demetrius Andre was crazy. Excuse me. A lot of people don't know this about Benavidez, but he's the second most accurate puncher alive today. Talking about total punches. He lands 37% of his total punches. And he's a light heavyweight. The man in front of him is Bam Rodriguez. Bam Rodriguez is a flyweight. So that gives you some perspective on how dangerous David Benavidez is to be that big and to be that accurate. He's very, very athletic and dangerous for his size. He's not supposed to be landing that many punches, but just shows you how great of an offensive fighter he is. Uh, you have Joe Joyce up here. Joe Joyce, he knocked out Daniel Dubois. In fact, he uh, broke his eye socket or something like that. Joe Joyce lost to Zhang, though. But Joe Joyce, he's been in the mix. I think he's 38 years old now, but he's been in the mix for a while trying to get to that... Um, that title. But that man has some serious power, man. Him and Daniel Dubois, they they had some fireworks. That fight was crazy. Of course, Deontay Wilder, 91. Deontay Wilder would have had an even higher knockout ratio if it wasn't for Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury fucked up his stats for real, for real. <laughs> it wasn't for those three fights with uh, Fury. Wilder's ratio would probably still be like 95 or 100. Tyson Fury fucked up that man's stats. But he's supposed to be more so at the top of the list. But he fought a fighter that he couldn't beat three times. And, of course, uh, his reasons why he couldn't beat Fury, like, you know, the glove gate, as well as Fury outweighing him by 40 pounds. But, you know, the numbers are in already. Someone says, is Naoa anyway a Hall of Famer? I mean, hey, this undisputed shit changed the game. So if you're one of the first to become undisputed in the weight class, you're going to the Hall of Fame. Neo, anyway, his power is very good as well because when you can collect all the belts within your weight class and you're, you still have an 88% knockout ratio, that says something. That means you're fighting the best people that they have to offer with the belt and you're still getting knockouts. Matias is the hardest fight for anyone from 135 to 140. The, well, when you say hard, I think I, I understand what you're saying because Matias is coming to throw his shots. His shots are going to be extremely hard. His shots are going to be... Um, his clip is going to be everlasting damn near. Like Matias, he throws a bunch of punches. They're all hard. Uh, he has a very offensive style. He has a style, not foot-wise, but theme, the theme of what he comes to do is like Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor was all offense, you know, all gas, no breaks. That's how Sabriel Matias is. Aaron was a better boxer than Sabriel, but they both was all gas, no breaks. I don't know how Sabriel does it. And Sabriel, he takes all type of punches. Hey, if y'all in here, make sure y'all liking the live, man. I appreciate it. Make sure you tap in the screen. Once Donaire broke NUA's face and he didn't flinch, I knew he was for real. What do you mean he broke NUA's face? Did you, NUA got his face broken? Continue. Angel, thanks for the follow. Someone says, Sabriel reminds me of Benavidez. Yes, uh, he does. He could be called the baby Benavidez. They fight in a very similar manner. Who's behind your head? David. David Benavidez has 88% knockout ratio. He has been fighting um, great competition. Oh, anyway, got his orbital bone broken by Donaire. 
And you ain't beat Donaire. He beat an older Donaire, but I didn't know that he got his orbital bone broken, man. Wow. Wow. I'm going to have to look into that, man. Anyway, he's a very interesting character. See Dragon, what's up? Yeah, no, what up? Yeah, I'm going to look into that, man. I didn't know that anyway got his face broke, man. Oh, yeah, um, the first Donaire fight, right? Yep. Yeah, she was kind of crazy. A little bloodbath. Hmm. I mean, I watched the Donaire fight. I didn't know he got his face broke. God damn. Deontay one always one. knew his boxing was suspect because of how late he started, and he had no technique. Yeah, Deontay started late, and he he got started working on skills after he lost to Tyson Fury. So by the time he wanted to learn how to box, he was like 34, 35 years old. So he started late, and he finished late. You know, but one guy who started late but has great skill, um, and that's why... Uh, Coach Calvin called him an oldie but goodie. It's Frank Martin. Frank Martin is like 30, but his skill level for somebody that started boxing at 18 is very, very high. But that's because he works predominantly on his skills. Whereas Deontay, he's focused on his power because that was his main gift. That was the thing that made him famous. Chavo was good, man. What's up, man? All right. Everything good in the hood? Um, what, you yeah, think about, um, what do y'all think about, because everybody keeps talking about Virgil Ortiz and Boots. Virgil Ortiz has knocked out everybody's face. How do y'all think that fight will go? I think I think Boots is just too skillful for Virgil. Um, but it's just because, like, I don't know, man. I haven't seen Virgil really, like, you know, do that tough competition because his last guy, the last guy he fought didn't even go past, like, two or three rounds, right? Like it was, a, it was a stoppage. I don't know. I just, I feel like I need to see more out of. Uh, I, I need to see more out of Virgil because I've already seen Boots fight a guy who similarly fights. Like Via, like, Via, like what you mean? You know what I'm saying? Because Via? like Via, Via had cinder blocks in his hands and he he was throwing combos. So like I already know how Boots would handle somebody like that. But how would Virgil handle somebody like, like Boots? Boots. You know what I mean? Man, that's one hell of an answer. I can't even lie. Race Pacer, what's up? Yeah, I got my answer, man. I think Virgil Ortiz fight too tall, and he's a too flat footed for for Boots. Boots is very athletic, very twitchy. He could throw on different angles. He could he could box. Uh, a flat footed fighter is always a puncher's night. A uh, flat footed nightmare. I just think that Boots would really outclass him and make him look silly, man. It's just wow, a man. I think this would be the next a next step up fight for Boots and Virgil because that'd be a fight that kind of separated the two. To show where everybody where they are. Because but isn't, um, Virgil, I didn't mean to cut you off, brother, but isn't Virgil at uh, 154 now? Yeah. Boos is at 147, but Crawford said he, he would go to 54, and Boos is trying to get a fight with Crawford. I don't think that um, it's nothing for Boos to go to 154. Like, I think he would go up there. Most of the guys from 47 are either old or, or gone. You know what I mean? So he gonna have the boost gonna have to go to fifty four sooner or later anyway. Now, Yo, Nino was uh, good. Now, KJ, I got a question. What do you do? All right, what's up, Race Pacer? What's the question? Who you do you think Shakur should fight William Cepeda, or you think he should rematch De Los Santos? Shakur should rematch De Los Santos and try to get a stoppage or something. Nah, I feel like Shakur could get a stoppage on Cepeda. No, no, no. I'm not talking about what's easier. I'm saying in order for to shut people up, sometimes you got to do that. Floyd did that. When they said Castillo beat him, Floyd shut everybody up. When they said Maidana beat him, Floyd shut everybody up. He didn't shut him up with a stoppage, but he shut him up with clean boxing. Yeah. But I think Shakur, he said he's, he's turned into Killer Core. That's what he said. Well, if he is Killer Core, then go out there and kill De Los Santos. And speaking of killing, number uh, the guy with the 95% Knockout ratio, he killed um, uh, Dada Shev. That man, Sabriel Matias, is mm. called a body in the ring. He, he's a very dangerous fighter, man. When you, whenever you listen to his fights, you get, he could be right in front of his opponent and you could still hear the punches pop with no space. With, like, it's crazy. He has a very, he must have very dense bones or something, but he's a very dangerous fighter, man, Sabriel Matias. Hey, hey, KJ, I got two things. What's up, Nina? Who that dude is? Who that dude is on the side of the tank? Not Matias, the other dude. Joe Joyce, heavyweight. I think he like 38 now. 
Uh, he's very, very dangerous. He stopped Daniel Dubois. Daniel Dubois is the guy that they cheated against Usyk. Usyk um, got caught with a body shot by Dubois. He acted like he got hit in the nuts because really he got hit with a body shot and he couldn't get up. So Joe Joyce beat the guy who beat Usyk, basically. Uh, oh, yeah, one more thing. Man, I was trying to look for your YouTube yesterday. You you going to start posting your YouTube, man? No, the YouTube is just it's just KJR TV. Yeah, bet, bet. Oh, actually, matter of fact, you had a, a clip. I posted a clip of um with when you were describing Tank and how he you said he no fighter is gonna come to the fight, you know, messing around. Everybody gonna come to the fight turned all the way up. So Tank never gonna be in, in an easy fight because everybody gonna you know get geared up to fight him. Uh, I'm just I'm paraphrasing, but. That clip that you that you said, man, that clip got like ten thousand views, man, on YouTube. Damn. So the people, the people was fucking with what you was saying, but well, someone was hating though. Someone was like, "Well, hell no, this dude don't know what the hell you talking about." But that's just how it is. Yeah, that's true. And that's that's another thing I want to touch on. Anybody who come up here regularly, if you love boxing and you have boxing takes and you got something to say, you should post videos on TikTok or YouTube because. Uh, if your clip did 10,000 views, it was just your voice. I didn't even talk in the clip. I was just looking, letting you speak. That shit did 10,000 views. So sometimes people, you may not know that you could make content as well. Everybody has a phone. You know how they say, if you got a phone, you got a lawyer. If you got a phone, you're a content creator because you could do it. Yeah. So I yeah, I'd be hopping on this shit to play fucking Fight Night. But well, you know what I'm saying? But that's pretty much it. Fight Night and hopping into lives. I got another question, though. So. How, how do you break him in a long time? How do how do you break down that fight with Tate versus uh my man's what's my man's name that he's fighting right now? Um Frank Martin. Frank Martin, yeah. Break that okay, fight. Okay, I'm gonna break it down, man. Early on, Tank gonna do what he always do. He's gonna start slow. The thing is, Frank Martin is a guy who he likes to think about what he's doing as well. So both of these guys are really IQ fighters who happen to be very athletic. But if you're gonna play the slow game, you're playing into Tank's game. So what I would advise Frank Martin to do, start fast. Everybody who started fast against Tank, they saw success. You just can't get too, you just can't get too eager. Like Ryan saw success when he started fast against Tank. Roly saw success when he started fast against Tank. Leo Santa Cruz, but they got too thirsty. So if Frank Martin start fast, but he could use his feet and get in and get out, he could run up the score like five or six rounds early on. Now, if he tried to play in the tank game, which I think he's going to because he's not really, he's not really a guy that likes to push the pace. He's a guy that likes to think, just like Tank likes to think. But I think Tank is better at that game than him. Man, the first couple of rounds, not much action gonna happen. The announcer's gonna be talking about like, hasn't much had to happen. Then Tank gonna hit that fucking switch and Frank gonna feel the power. <laughs> Seriously, Frank gonna feel the power in the middle rounds. Frank gonna be forced to fight. That's what you're gonna see Tank, uh, Frank starting to let go of those combinations because Frank, he could throw punches and flurries and punches and bunches faster than Tank Davis can. Uh, we seen that in the fight against Adetunian. I don't know if you saw that fight, but Frank threw like a 10 or 12 punch combination. He looked like Melody Taylor. So Tank is gonna force Frank to defend himself from the power. So Frank might win two or three rounds off of that. But as the fight goes on, Frank Martin gonna be overthinking. That's how he did in the Adetunian fight. He was thinking too much about what he's gonna do next. Uh, Tank just gonna be in the zone. Tank gonna be using his brain and counter punching, and I think the power gonna wear it down, Frank. Um, and I think say? Frank probably gets stopped around like the eleventh round. Who who would you say, KJ? Which fighter out of Tank's career? Who would you say that gave Tank the most problems? Oh, Pitbull Cruz, no, without a doubt. Yeah, but I really do see ever since Frank Martin got with Derek James, he got more flat footed as mm -hmm. as. As his hold up, hold up. When did he get with Derek? He got with Derek James, I think like two or three fights ago. I forgot who okay, he Okay, now check this out because he Errol signed him, right? Right, correct. You made a great point. When you go watch his earlier fights, was he with Derek James when he fought um Michelle? I'm not too sure. I gotta go back and look at his tape. I'm not gonna say now so from the Michelle fight on back, the man was looking really, really good on his feet. And I made a um I'm actually going to do a breakdown before that fight, but that's going to be on Patreon. But one of the things that I touch on is that Frank Martin, 
he's trying to do the Errol Spence, Derek James style, and that style is not built for him. Like his natural body is the way his body moves, how fast his feet are, how athletic and reflexive he is. And also his uh, unwillingness really to really want to take punishment. To fight in a Derek James style, to do what Errol Spence does, you have to be okay with taking oh, this is food down here. I don't think that Frank Martin want to take all that punishment. I don't blame him for that. Like who the fuck want to get uh, trade all those shots as a boxer, number one. But number two, Frank is too fast in his lower body to be sitting there all stiff and flat footed. Like right. he should be on his toes and he should be using a lot of the angles that he knows how to do. Frank Martin is great at pivoting. He's great at creating angles. Uh, if you watch some of his earlier fights, I mean, he's a beautiful fighter. It's just that people didn't really know who he was. He's never really done it on the big stage. And when he got on the big stage against Otto Tunic, he didn't look too good. He was hesitant for whatever reason. Hey, if y'all in here um, watching the live, make sure you tap in the screen, the people that's in the chat and stuff. See, that's interesting. We got to see. We got to see what te what Frank Martin is going to show up to that fight. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious of what what Frank Martin is going to show up, man. Now, the Frank Martin that boxes is going to be a challenge for Tank. Exactly. My thing is this though. Um, a lot of people don't understand this, but Frank, since Frank Martin started late, he's still trying to find himself as a boxer. That's what it looks like to me. Stewie and Vincenzo, thanks for liking a lot. But at this point, you cannot get into the ring and be trying to figure out how you want to go about dissecting your opponent once you get in front of a tank date. You have to already know exactly what you want to do. And you got to make decisions on the fly because at that level, it's one or two different moments that really decide a fight. Just yeah. one or two different moments. And I'll give you an example. The Errol Spence fight. Second round, Errol made one mistake, never recovered. Not to say he would have beat Crawford anyway, but literally from that point on in that second round when he got knocked down, never got his legs back under him, never really recovered in the fight, and never got his mind back about him because that shit was such a shock to him that, damn, I really just got dropped. Fight just started. So you I, have to I, I really don't think he's ready for tank, bro. I'm, I, I personally don't think. That's just me. Okay, no, no, okay. Now, why, though? A lot of it has a lot to do with experience, swagger. Um, I Say think swagger? Tank, yeah. Okay, I mean, no, no, confidence is definitely uh, plays a part in that, in that ring. That just, crowd uh, be changing people, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I don't, I don't so think. Now, that's a hell of a point. Now, in that fight against Adetunian, that was Frank Martin, first time. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if, look, Boxing, it, boxing is you know mental as it is physical. I think it's ninety percent mental, bro. Okay, fair enough. Um, when you in the bit, wait, what? Where they gonna fight anyway? Is it is it in Las Vegas? It's probably gonna be in Vegas. Oh no, 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 no. Are they fighting? Yeah, it's okay. Vegas. I think oh, it's Vegas. All right, so okay, Las Vegas is the biggest stage for boxing. Um, I don't think. I, I don't think he's mentally ready to face a guy like him. When you in a bit, I mean, it's like, it, I mean, it's, it's like, and it's like an inexperienced basketball player in his first time going into finals, going against a Michael Jordan or something like that. I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if he's ready mentally. All right, I, I, think, now, I, I, I think, I think he needs to get a little bit more experience. Uh, this is the thing, Savo. The man, thirty years old. Hey, he's he not ready now. He's never gonna be ready. Hey, look, man. I feel you on that, but like you said, he just started late. But this is Tank we talking about, man. You ain't fighting. You, you ain't fighting just any other fight. You fighting a superstar. Listen, you. A lot of you can start whenever you start. He's thirty yeah. years old, so yeah. he don't. If he's not ready now, he's never going to be ready. There's no what. What more is there for him to do? Boxing is simple. You fight them. You fight the scrubs at first. Then you start fighting decent competition. Then you start fighting some undefeated fighters. Then you fight real contenders. Next thing yeah. you know, you try to become a champion. That's what Frank Martin is trying to do right now. So he's already went through all the other steps. Although he started at 18, he's fought the scrubs. He's fought yeah. the guys uh, who were pretty good, like Michelle. I think, is it Michelle Rivera? He fought Michelle R Rivera. Um, yeah, those were good. Yeah, yeah those were good. Yeah. Oh, Adam Tunian. Adam Tunian was an Olympian. Adetunia was one of the best fighters Germany had to offer. He beat him. So he's I fought. Mean, he went from I, bums to okay to some of the best in the world. Now it's time for him to challenge the best, trying to go for that belt. It's, I mean, there's no more tight. 30 years old. What do you want the man to do? 
Yeah. So yeah. When, when it comes to tank, I think a good I think a good strategy that any a potential opponent could you know kind of like set forth is like um, overwhelm him with uh, overwhelm him with like combinations. You feel me? Make him uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's something that um, that Pitbull Cruz, Roly, you know, even like Ryan, Ryan, they had good success with it. They just didn't really move their heads off the line when they fucking did it. But like. Um, they were throwing mad good combinations, and they had him uncomfortable moving back, um, stuff like that. They just people got to do that, but also not get you know too overconfident. Move your head off the line when you're throwing these punches, so you don't get caught. Yeah. A good person that I think would be a pretty interesting matchup would be Navarrete versus Tank, because his yeah. only reason is because his punches <laughs> from every angle. So like I think it'd be real awkward, but he, he would get knocked out. I just would like uh, Navarrete's feet. He gonna have a feet. Somebody says it's a title fight. I think that didn't Tank get one of Devin's titles when Devin vacated? Yes, he did. Nah, they just got rid of the super instead of elevating him. So they kept Tank's they kept Tank's belt. They just got rid of the super belt now. Okay. So is this, is this a title fight with um with Tank and uh? Boy, I'm Frank? tired of all these damn belts, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a title it, it, fight. It, okay, it, title it, fight. Get used to it. It's there. I'm, right, I'm, I'm, tired, I'm tired of all these bells, bro. It's like, man, I, I can't. I, I remember when Andre Ward did an interview where he was talking about, and I didn't even notice that the governing bodies, they were taking 3%. I'm like, 3%? 3% on what? What the hell did they do to, to warrant 3%? And that's per belt. Well, listen, listen, Shavo, uh, any government, right. any business, the higher up people organize, bro, that's a lot. take their taxes. Man. Like, you pay taxes, right? So boxes, that's their tax. It's not really that big a deal. Bro, yeah. but that's three, yeah, bro, but that's three percent. I'm don't get me wrong. Three, I mean three percent adds up for each belt. What the hell do they do to warrant three percent? Because I promise you, Floyd Mayweather wasn't giving these cats three percent. No, Floyd Mayweather vacated the belt. That's why. Yeah, he never kept them. He, that's why he would give them that's away. That's why he was letting go. Yeah. He wasn't giving these cats three percent. Yeah, he was. That's why he, he said was, I'm, that's why I'm vacating, why he, I'm vacating the belt. Yeah. But listen, no, I got a question. Let's get back to that Frank Martin and um tank tank thing. Uh I got a question. Boxy Dragon, you were saying that in order for Frank to really get tank off of his square, he gotta come at him with a lot of pressure, a lot of combinations and stuff like that. The problem yeah. is everybody who does that, they suffer East Side Cruz, they got their ass knocked out. Um I don't know if Frank Martin really wants to take that punishment when you watch the fight with Adentunia. Barry James wanted him to fight in the Errol Spence style. Frank Martin didn't want to just walk through punches and shit. So I think Frank Martin has to find a way to land those punches, and get, get out, and get out. Because yep. if you want to be trying to land a ten punch combination on Tank, he will counter you. So you want yep. to throw like two or three and get out of there. Yep, exactly. I was going to say if you want to fight him in the inside twelve rounds, and you think your head movement go last twelve rounds, when you wake up, you will notice it didn't. KD. <laughs> But you, you just made the perfect example. Like, this is the exact same thing that happened to Roley. He was trying to outbox Tank. And he just don't know Tank fucking IQ and counterpunching so on the elite level to what that shit no, caught up to him. You got to think with Roley, the Tank, bro, you got to do some secure shit. You got to run damn near, basically. Ro Roley, Roley didn't have the experience. Roley, actually, when you rewatch that fight, Roley was doing okay. Yeah, Roley won like two the, rounds. He don't have the experience to know where the rope is at. So when he's fighting and he's going backwards, he don't have the experience to judge, okay, that rope is there, let me go left or right. He don't have that experience. So when he hit that rope, that's when he got hit. Let me, and he melted let me, right there on the ropes. Let me tell you the secret how to beat Tank. You got to have a powerful jab. That's the main key. Man, that shit don't work, bro. Barrios yeah, had a good yeah. little jab. You Barrios see where he got him? Barrios ain't have a jab to beat no damn tank. Nah, he ain't got that. If you watch that, that yo, he said that shit don't work. I'm be honest with you. I'm be honest with well, you. Well, it's not going. You're not going to only come in with a jab. Do you know you how to know beat how to somebody with people. all of those? Think about it. Do you have to assess the, the fighter? Assess the fighter. Tank Davis has generational power. He's one of the fastest fighters in the world. He has all types of experience in boxing. He was seven. One of the real fighters, you know, reflexive. He has pretty much everything besides long arms. Great legs. Like, beat a fighter like that, you literally just have to be another great fighter. That's it. Yeah. When Durant, uh, <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard, 
The only reason he won is because he was a great fighter. So <laughs> meaning he brought in a package and he brought in the skills where he was able to compete. Of course, Ray Leonard had a dumb game plan, but that's a part of boxing. Anybody could go out there and not execute their game plan. But Bro, in order am I, am... to be another truly great fighter, you had to be a great fighter yourself. And that's why Frank Martin, yeah, in my opinion, this bro. Off, it's going to raise his stock so much uh, in boxing, even though he's already 30, people are going to be looking at him totally different. That's the only way you could be Tank. You have to be great because Tank is great. That's it. You good ain't going good isn't going to be able to do. Pitbull Cruz was good. It's not going to be enough. And that's, and that's bro, in my opinion, bro, the only way for somebody, for a great fighter to be Tank, you got to bully that man mentally and physically. I think that's the only way you can do it. <laughs> like, you got to like, no be, be the bad guy. Shit, that motherfucker the bad guy. from Baltimore ain't no bullying him mentally. Bully <laughs> that don't mean nothing. That don't mean that, 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 Hey, look, let me tell you something, bro. Thing, look, when you in that ring, when you in that ring, it don't matter where you from. Me, it's me and you. Yeah, that's fact. Bro, it's me and you. All that stuff. You can't do nothing about it. The only way to be tanked, you're going to have to run like you could. That's the only way to be tanked. That's another way to do it. I think Shakur the only one how to use your legs. That's another way to do it. You can't use footwork. And work That's what I'm saying, KJ. They, they, bro, like, if you go watch Roller fight, he was winning the whole fight, bro. No, he's not. Tank, bro. Right, yo, KJ, bro. man, I'm Tank, telling you, bro. Tank hey, is I'm just baiting hey, him. Hey, yo, KJ, bro, okay. somebody got to be, yo, somebody got to do what Roberto Durant did to and Sugar Ray Leonard. Lot, they they, 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 they got to be the bad guy. See, well, why why is it always the bad guy? Well, Roberto Durant brought into the ring, Roberto Durant could fight in five or six different styles. The yeah. man had power. The man had huge strength. He had feet like a black man. You know what I mean? But he knew how to fight on the inside like a Mexican. Yeah. Uh, like, to be tank, that's what I'm saying. You have to come in there. That's what I'm saying. Bag. And the only, the only fighter when you look at, like, who has a deep-ass bag? Devin's yeah. bag is pretty deep. Shakur bag, I don't know. I don't know. I have to, like, I don't know. All I know is Shakur's feet Bro. are see, special. See what these guys are thinking is going there match tank for tank. If you no. go in and match tank for tank, you're gonna get you're, you're gonna, gonna lose. Knocked out. Yeah. So this is what you no, gotta exactly. do. Exactly. You gotta do what Ray Lidd did in the rematch against Durant. Oh, well, what brother Durant? He wasn't he wasn't even ready, man. Facts. Train him. Listen, listen. Train you know, him. That's what Train him. Even though Roberto wasn't ready, Wait, you could say, okay, well, in the first fight, Sugar Ray fought a dumb game plan. That's stuff that that you can't really. It is. No, what it is. but okay, but with brother Durant situation. Hold on, I gotta let Don Judah finish. Then I'm gonna let you go, Shaw, because he was. I'm about to say. Is, is if Duran would have fought, uh, if, if Sugar Ray would have fought Duran, the first fight like he fought in the second fight when he was in shape, Sugar would have still won. He would have still won. I, so, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't think, in, I, I don't believe that. In, I don't believe Sugar that. Sugar Ray style, come I, on, man. Sugar I don't Ray's believe that. Style, his technique. I don't believe that. Was, I wasn't the story on that first Leonard Duran fight. Cool. Like, Look, even though we're better Durant fought, bro, his manager signed him on the rematch that he didn't know about. So the man, he, yo, man, man, the man had to spend all those couple, the small months he had to prepare to get to make weight. So he, he, he was drained that. out, bro. Hold up, hold up, no, so no. You were just up here no. the other day talking about Mike Tyson. You said, who fought his dad? Exactly. So no, that wasn't it. no, but that wasn't Roberto Durant's decision though. No, I'm the <laughs> nigga the Roberto Durant is grown ass man. What you mean? Nobody can That's make true. you fight. Nobody can make you the, con the, the really? manager can't sign the contract the for the fighter. The fighter has to sign the contract. Exactly. Now look, yeah, look, no, but he wanted he, that but, money. No, well, he took it. Agree, no, trust that your manager no, has no, no but no, the artist. rematch, no, the rematch, he didn't have enough time though. Now granted, he should now granted he should have kept his shape. He should have kept his behind his shape. Yeah, because Sugar Ray knew that's what Duran did between fights. He'd balloon up, he'd go party, yeah, he'd go he drink, he'd yeah, go he knew that. eat some okay, food. Yeah, who's right, so so that is a wild boy. Yeah, yeah. Is a great that's all that, I hear. Yeah. That still don't explain yeah. how to beat Tank, bro. KJ, yeah. so <laughs> what you doing? Listening. Hold up, Nina. Hold up. I'm going to go there. I'm going to let you go there. I'm going to break down what Don Judas saying. I watched both of those fights that's, multiple that's the times. Thing. <laughs> I watched the first fight and the second fight. The first fight... Sugar Ray fought a dumb game plan. You know what he tried to do? He tried to out uh Mati he tried to out macho he bullied him. I can give you, can give you the exact words Sugar Ray said before the fight. He said, I'm not letting no 135 pounder come up here to 147 and bully me. I'm gonna fight him in the inside and I'm gonna beat him that way. And, and that's what he tried and he lost. Yes. 
No, yeah, but, hey, look, it wasn't hey, like it was a hey, one sided. What drove Sugar Ray Leonard to do okay, that, I, though, man? He, yo, I just dude, told you, he, 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 he said 135 pounder cannot come to 147 and beat me. That's what he said. I'm not letting no 135 pounder come up here and beat me. That's hey, look, why, hey, look. this out. Check this out, man. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, he fought a dumb fight. He tried to fight very, uh, he, tried to out, he tried to out macho a machismo fighter. Yeah, Dunn, he tried to tell him. With, with, Roley, to tell with Roley and uh Pitbull and with um with Ryan Garcia, they're trying to pretty much knock Tank out. That's a, Ryan, I'm gonna knock him out. Um uh, Roley said the same thing. I'm gonna knock yeah. him out. Bro, why are y'all yeah. trying to match power with power? Oh, That's what yeah. I just forgot. I think you gotta put water on fire. You can't well, put fire on you gotta put water. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean that's what Don was saying. That's what I'm I mean, saying. Now yeah. look, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna finish this point and I'm gonna let y'all go. But listen, in the second fight and in the fight with Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray's antics, his speed, the way he uses footwork, the way he sets shit up, and the way he played mental games with him, kind of like Ali. That's what allow him to really frustrate Durant. That's why Durant Durant didn't quit because of the ass whooping. Durant got his ass whooped after that and didn't quit. It was because mentally it was embarrassing. So that's what that's what it's going to take to be tank. But you no still mouse. have to be a great fighter. Now I'm, somebody else could go. That's all I want to say. Um. Yeah. I think I was saying this. You're saying about guys like Roy and Ryan just trying to knock Tank out and not having any other game plan. I feel like a lot of these guys should have take the Terrence Crawford approach, which is. I'm not going in there looking for a knockout, but if it comes, I'll do it. Yeah, that's all. If it comes, it comes. Yeah, because, I think so. Basically, y'all yeah, want these fighters to run. Everybody knows Fury did not properly prepare for that fight, but I feel like in the first few rounds, he was really trying to force the knockout when it really was not going to come to him. Who? Uh, so Fury, you're saying Fury if a boxer. You want the boxer to run instead of fighting. You don't have to box. Well, you don't have to run the box. Yeah, you can. You can. That's you can box don't understand. You don't have to run you with step back, uh, backward to the step to the side um, to box. Yeah, it's lateral movement. Yeah, you, you can't run in the ring, bro. Yep. No, you can run. I've seen it. You can run in the like, ring. Yes, like, you can. Like Joe Lewis. The like Joe Ortiz Lewis and ring. Billy Kahn. You can run. Hey, run. Hey, check this out. It's four corners in that ring. Y'all never saw. Y'all never saw. Y'all never saw. I guess y'all never saw. Um. Uh, what's his name? Camacho. Then, if you telling me you can't run in the ring, you never see. I never saw Camacho fight. Check, hey, no, check this out. But what I'm saying is that this four corners, you can't do it all day. I'm gonna get you. I ain't Camacho gonna get you this round, next round, but I'm gonna get you. You can't, you can't run forever. Yo, what do you say? Hey, yo, what do you say in the Warriors? Come out the plate. You going to come out sometime, bro? You can't run forever. No. Top right, Antoine Russell. Somebody to Wait, hey, KJ. Ooh, What's up, num baby? Number 95. You got to do what Meldrick Teller no. did to, to, to Chavez in that fight. First. Huh? Yeah. I'm, no. I'm, a, yo, I'm, I'm a fan of Inoue, bro. What he did, what's his name to, um, yeah, I forgot his name. Oh, uh, uh, who was that Philly fighter? Fulton. Cool Hands. Fulton. Oh, you know, uh, bro, cool Boy. Yo, yo, uh, Stephen Fulton. Bro, I watched that fight, KJ. I've never been so frustrated. I'm over here looking at Fulton. That man's scared to throw a punch. I'm like, bro. NUA was so fast and he hit so hard. Fulton, he kind yeah, of and, like, what the fuck? That's all it was. Like, yeah, and Fulton. And Fulton really didn't does not have that much power. So what's he no, what's he going to do? do? It's like, all right, I'll give you an example. And I'm not saying that NUA is an athlete that Roy was, but a lot of people when they actually got in the ring with Roy and they experienced the speed and power combination, they ain't know what the fuck to do. So they just was standing there like, what the hell? They don't want to punch because, damn it, if I punch, you're going to counter. Don't catch me so, with that left hook. That left hook. That's what speed does. Speed make you think make you think twice. You know what Bro, I mean? one of the greatest man, knockouts so. I've ever seen. This man had both hands behind his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I ain't you, never you, seen no shit. Yo, like that. Okay, Wait, um, that was... I'm going to give you a, a fight. You, you, you remember that um British fighter? He was a middleweight. And, uh, he, he, used to, he used to no no it was a black British fighter. He used to run in the ring. I can't remember his name right now, but he fought Julian Jackson. The drunken master. Oh, oh uh, I know what you're talking. Uh, Are you uh, talking about Julian I, the Hulk Jackson? No, 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 no he's no, talking. No, he's talking, no, about, talking about, um, about the dude that he fought when he fought for his first middleweight title. When he left 154, mm. it was a vacant title. Oh. He fought dude not, from uh, England. Not, not not Nigel Ben, right? I can't think his name. No. Oh shit, he was a runner. He's the run and punch it. I used to call him Banks. 
No, no, no. Emmanuel Augustus. Nah, man, they, they, this is during the eighties, my brother. Middleweight title. Nigel, they wasn't no runners. No, no, they wasn't runners. This dude was a runner. He was. His name. He never fought Julian Jackson anyway, but uh, he was he out. He ran the whole fight. Was outboxing the shit out of Julian Jackson. Had his eyes swelled up and everything. He made one mistake, and Julian put him in the hospital. That was the best knockout I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Hmm. That was hey. you can Google that. Just Google Julian Jackson first middleweight fight or title fight. And you'll see what I'm talking about. I just can't get the guy. You know, it's crazy, man. Julian Jackson, he never really had any um any coverage, man. He fought during the Mike Tyson era. It's, it's, he never really had, he's not really a known name. I haven't heard that name in a long time, bro. He didn't that, become that has famous. To do with him. That has something to do with Don King. Don King wouldn't promote him right. So yeah. he used to complain about that all the time. I hit just I pound for pound. I hit just as hard as Mike Tyson. I'm knocking out people yeah. and I'm not making no money. Blah blah blah. But King didn't care about him. King only cared about Mike. So that's why Julian Jackson never got the the promotion that he should have gotten. That's Don't that's what we're talking about today. It had nothing Don't to do with Don King. That snake. Hey, so <laughs> hey, hey, so so so, how would you beat David Haney? How would you beat him? Uh, I'll bully him. Because <laughs> you ain't gonna box that long off. Uh, by by, by getting inside and, and look, you gotta knock him out. That's knock that Devin, yeah. yeah, that's why Devin and Tank is such a great fight. Literally, it's fire versus ice. Yeah, uh, what Devin is good at, and what Devin has naturally is what Tank can't get. Just like in basketball, you can't teach height, so Tank yeah. never gonna have long arms. He never gonna have yeah. long legs. That's what the shit try to catch him yeah. lean into the left. What's well, that? Like a 73 inch big guy, man. Bro, that and take, yo, and take is a midget. Long ass arm, the long jab. He could set yeah. it. He could throw right hands from a distance. A distance. Like David Benavides, like those long pot shots. That's that, what Tank could never really do. But you, you, what Tank has naturally is something that Devin could never get, never have, and that's that power. So power. when they when they meet, pretty much mm. we're going to see which style is yeah. great, who's better at what they what they do. But don't and take your your and take your measure. Were you like five five? Yeah, you know that little five, punching five. game. You know, Tank yeah. hit that shit harder like, than Deontay Wilder. Yeah, the punching bag. Yeah, like, yeah, he like hit, I'm I'm five four. Machine. Tank is probably around my height. Now hold up, Levi. Don Judah said something that that is kind of got muffled out. But Don Judah said Tank Davis scored higher on that little punch machine than Deontay Wilder. Now we know the punch machine isn't <laughs> accurate, but it shouldn't even be close because Tank Davis is five five. Well, he probably yeah, walks around at 150. Yeah. So it just lets you know that that man has generational power. Like he's one of the hardest hitters yeah. in the world in that small little body and that small frame. Hey, That's man, it's all about the core strength and the legs, my brother. Just yeah, a thing, yeah. though. Like, doesn't, I, I've heard I've story. It's like, doesn't Tank spar with heavy legs? I said the dude got great legs. Tank got great legs. Yeah. Oh, it's all yeah, about it. them legs and that core strength, my brother. Yeah. Just a thing, yeah. though. Deontay Wilder just yeah. got like. Massive Man, power. He's a giant, bro. Tank know I saw how to him punch with the power yeah. he got. Tank. Like, uh, Tank where, I don't know, know where Wilder. Deontay Wilder just be like, swinging with power. And, 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 and yeah. the point, he don't punch and correctly. I, I, I don't know where it comes from. Like, well, Y'all have seen pictures that's of Wilder. Just, just a man. Just a man. Just to understand that. Like, Wilder has correctly. basketball legs, is why. He's yeah. able to, he's like, he's got back. He's physically gifted, bro. I wish I was 16. Like, Sugar Ray Leonard has skinny legs. I mean, not Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Robinson had very skinny legs. He's one of the hardest punches to ever do it. Yeah. But um, it's not necessarily. Yeah, but, he's, yeah, but that's a welterweight and a middleweight with Wilder. That's a heavyweight. Hmm? Yeah, but uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, or you said Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah, that, that's a guy who's a welterweight and a middleweight with Wilder. He's a heavyweight. You've never seen a heavyweight with those kind of legs. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just, well, what Wilder like six, um, what? Six, he's six, seven, six, eight, bro. Seven, he's a power six. forward. How big do you think his leg is going to be? Yeah. Turns, Thomas Turns is skinny as yeah. fuck, and he can yeah. punch like so a motherfucker. A, a lot of those yeah. dudes with skinny legs, they can yeah. punch. Yeah, but, it's not, it's not yeah, about but I'm pretty sure Tommy Hearns' legs right are bigger than his. Hold, right on, hold on, wait a minute. Tom, hold on, Tommy right Tom Tom Hearns was no stick now. Don't do not do that. No, Hearns pretty much was a stick. He was just cut up. But um, oh, no, he, he, just, nah, man. he, he was, was real. You know, hey, look, man, stick look at his leg muscles, bro. He wasn't no stick. Was that was her. He was a rip stick. He, he just look, man. Don't don't confuse with being long with being a stick. 
<clears throat> he was what man, six was one. Hell, man. Oh, look, go look at Tommy Hearns versus Aaron yeah, Pryor yeah. in the amateurs. Tommy yeah, Hearns, yeah. as hell. Yeah. Aaron Pryor jacked. Yeah, but Naturally jacked. yeah, but I think I think it's because Tommy Hearns. I, I think it's just because Tommy Hearns is just long. I don't really think that equates to being a stick yeah. by being skinny. You could you could yeah. be thin and knock people the fuck out. You remember? You remember? Just, you, you, you remember it's Alexis? Like, Sar like you remember Alexis like, like, He's long. Okay. I don't really think he's skinny. Like Alexis Arguello yeah. was called. Well, you know what his nickname was? Everyone knows his nickname. Uh, Miss, uh what was his name? No, oh, come on, KJ. You guys know like Alexis Arguello. Come on, Don Judo. Yeah. yeah, we know. I know who Arguello man. is. The thin man. The thin. That was, that was his nickname. Yeah, yeah, thing, and he knocked him. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah but we, we, if y'all remember Kennedy McKinney, he was a skinny, skinny dude. No, no, yeah, he was skinny. I agree. Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, Kenny was fighting at one fifteen, and he he could knock out a welterweight. And he Man. was skinny, and and that's yeah. the dude that I, we was on the same team in the army. So it ain't nothing. I, it ain't. Uh, it's Damn you, old old G. I'm fifty five. How you think I know about Sugar Ray and all them <laughs> dudes? What they said. Before the now he's my brother. You what they or, or I know you. I know you're old. Wait, you old. Wait, you. wait Shavu, how old are you? How old are you? you said? Me? Oh, I'll be 29 in what? Two weeks? Okay, you still, I'm 34. I'll be 35 at this. Moment. Yeah, I'm a, hey, I'm, so I'm, I'm a 90s got? kid. Lord, me with a sugar ring. I got yeah, one. Floyd made with a sugar ring. I got Floyd. Leonard oh, or Robinson? Wait, which sugar Walter, ring? Robinson what, the Ray sugar ring. You said nobody beating a, a sugar prime sugar Ray Robinson. I don't care what nobody say. Not even no Roy Jones, no Bernard Hopkins, none of them do. Who who you talking about? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about Robinson. You talking about Robinson? Robinson. Robinson, Robinson too big. You <laughs> too big for who? You're the welterweight. If you a welterweight, you ain't no too big. If you no, I'm not talking about too big as in they can't fight each other. I'm saying his, he was standing six foot tall. Somebody, somebody, then he had power. Uh, and I'm not oh, saying oh, that like he was like. Somebody, like boys, yo, who, who, who's that? that for somebody somebody got to mute their mic. I'm saying the reason that that Robinson is going to win because he's just as skilled as Floyd, right? He's just yeah. as fast. He's bigger than him. Oh, you talking about Floyd? Tall. I thought somebody was talking about. Uh, I thought somebody had mentioned Roy. I, I, oh, yeah, no, I, I, no, 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 he said. No, I heard, no, I heard Roy Jones Jr. and Sugar Ray. I'm like, which Sugar Ray you talking about? Yeah. Um, I mean, he was a, at welterweight. He was a huge welterweight man. Yeah. He was one of the most skilled fighters. Somebody got to mute, man. Somebody got to mute their mic. I think it was Levi right. eating chips or some shit. I don't know. I ain't saying. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I heard somebody say Roy Jones Jr. and they said again, Sugar. I'm like, what Sugar Ray you talking about? You're not talking about Sugar Ray. Not really because Roy Jones Jr. is not Sugar Ray running out. Man, I think y'all overrate uh, Roy, but uh, that's no, I'm story. not, bro. I'm, I'm not. Wait, 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 Shabo, who you thought who you said Roy would be? Sugar Ray Leonard. I didn't say Robinson. No, I said Leonard because of the size difference. Yeah. Only because of the size difference. Well, Roy is bigger. If they the same way, I yeah. got. Yeah. Look, I can rate Leonard definitely. If they was yeah. say, if they was equal uh, weights, easy. Oh, okay, I'm gonna look at. It. I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this. I mean, you make it sound as if Tommy Hearns was a six one, bro. No, uh, Roy Jones was like what five eleven. Out of all of the most talked about, Hearns would be Roy Jones. Out of all, I, of the I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about that. You know what I'm mean? sorry. What'd so, you say, KJ? Out of all of the most talked about fighters, Roy has some of the worst technique. Like he had, he wasn't even a boxer. It was yeah, just because, his yeah, because, athleticism. because of his natural gifts, he could yeah. get away with that. So, yeah. so when you yeah, no Roy, jab, look, nothing. I, when we watched Roy, I was watching Roy have to. Tyson, right? That you know the old fight. Mike Tyson old as hell. He was pretty much Roy had to pretty much hold um for the rest of for the last four rounds of the fight because Mike Tyson was relying back on his peekaboo technique. Roy ain't had shit but just jumping in and holding, yeah. jumping in and holding. He he wouldn't even. Roy really Jones Jr. should have never been in the ring with that man, bro. He's too big, he's too small. Yeah, like after, no, no, like after that, saying, I'm just saying, um, <laughs> when you have fundamentals, you're gonna revert back to the fundamentals. Roy didn't have the fundamentals, so he didn't have anything to go back to. Tyson yeah, older than Roy and could go back to that peekaboo. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I remember age, that he goes back to the fundamentals. So I think Roy would hey, look too good against some of the other greats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I, I remember that little exhibition I, they had. Like, I, Roy looked I, like I he was going to die after I that. Think he, I, I, I think say, he will beat Roy Leonard. Now, Marvin Hagler, I don't know. I don't think he will beat Hagler, but I think he will beat Leonard, though. 
Because of his size, yeah. I mean, no, I ain't got nothing to do with size. Marvin Hagler to me is a better boxer. Size, bro. If you a good big man, always nine times out of ten, a good big man will always be the good small man. Yeah. Marvin Hagler is not it's small, which is why I still believe you're a different style. We know yeah. styles make which, fights. Which, why, which is why David Benavidez will mop the floor with Canelo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Marvin Hagler David. was a small though. But something else. Do we really call David David Benavidez is a good fight? I love him, but is he a great He's fighter? Great. Yeah. No, he, he really hasn't had the, great, Don, you know? no, he hasn't had the opportunity to prove how great equal, he is. Uh, equal, when you talk about equal levels, so we look at Ray Leonard and Roy Jones as kind of equal, right? But they different in size. So, but if, if you put them against each other, that's two great fighters, but one is bigger than the other, right? Naturally. So that's what I'm doing. Hey, I'm so I think David Benavidez's his career is still going. I think we're looking at one of the great ones, bro. Like, they, yeah, I just did a video on this. Why is it that the the fight between him and Andre wasn't even competitive? Uh, Andre had never lost before, has never been stopped, has never is all Andre has always put on competitive bout. It wasn't even competitive. The fight bro, was hold on, KJ. Caleb Plant bro, was Andre in life from the third round. Bro, uh, I, 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 okay, KJ, I want money that night because I never thought that Andre would beat. Uh, David Benavides. I, yeah. I, I, I want money yeah, that I night. I knew Andre wasn't going to win that. Fight. I knew she. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen to this, though. It wasn't even competitive. It, it was. Andre the title fight then? He's getting a title fight. Huh? Who? They get ready to give him a title yeah. fight. Oh, yeah. After I, mean, I mean, I want him to fight that Cuban boy. 60? Who that Cuban boy, KG? I want him to fight him. Morel? Yeah, I want. that's who I want him to fight. Morel? Hey, listen to this, though. I don't think he's going to beat Benavides. Huh? McGraw only has ten fights. I don't think he could beat David. Uh, I, I, I was just thinking something. I don't either, but yeah, I think. But I think. But I think. I, I think it will be. Um, I think he'll be different from what David Benes is used to uh, fighting. I think. I think it'll be something fights, different. Man. I don't think you understand. Like ten <laughs> fights. You only got ten fights. Why rush him? Yeah, they're like that. No. Yeah. It's ten professional fights. Awesome. Yeah. And also, why put Don't him in with someone like him, Billy? That's the reason you're talking about him is because he's from the. Came with all type of skill and so because of their amateur background is so in depth. So people looking at his skill base and saying, "Okay, he's from Cuba. Oh, he's ready for David Benavidez." No, he's not ready for David. He need at least another ten fights. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen to this though. Yeah, I said Andre and uh, Andre. Uh, that fight went close with Andre and Benavidez, but the first three rounds, cause. Andre yeah. was putting that shit on him. He just got yeah, caught with one round. on the fourth round. I did at the end of the third no, one. It wasn't even the first, bro. I just watched the fight. As soon as the, the first two started, rounds, David Benavidez, David Benavidez rocked the hell out of Andre with a power shot. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the, the power first two was rounds, him. he was like, the first two rounds. Know? Andre was hanging in there with him, and then in the middle of the third no. round, Benavidez started catching steam. Bert, listen, look, man, look. I just watched the fight. Eli, right in the third round. Andre I, literally around the one one thirty uh, minute mark. Andre he tired out. He tired out. He looked like he, no, it looked like he started to feel all that damn pressure and all that power. Mm -hmm. But that's the third round. In the second round and in the later rounds, the only thing Andre was doing is he would get hit by big shots, back up a little bit, and then at the end of the round, he'd try to throw like these flashy five or six uh, combinations yeah. to make people forget about. Yeah, what I, I really don't think bro, they felt bro, like bro, any bro, bro, do you know, yo, bro? Do you know what mess? Yo, you know what mess with my self esteem, bro? Like real talk. Huh? It's not the fact. It's not the fact that a guy can hit hard. It's that when you when you hit a guy as hard as you can, like if you was to fight somebody like David Benavides, exactly. you give him a punch. It, it doesn't do. It, it doesn't even look like he's mind. even phased by that. It fuck with your mind when you can't hurt your opponent. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and so I haven't God, seen, and God. I haven't seen an opponent to even hurt David Benavidez. No, 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 he got hurt. He, no, 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 no. Didn't, didn't some guy drop him with a jab? In the sixth round, when when I think that was Andre technique. I don't think he was hurt. No, in the sixth round, when Andre was, it was almost over. Andre had one last roar. I'm gonna do a video on it. Uh, I got it in my nose, but uh, he hurt David Benavidez. Popped his head back. Caleb Plant in the second round hurt David Benavidez. Graville dropped David Benavidez. Like David Benavidez is not indestructible. He a human being. He could be yeah. hurt. Yeah. But he recovered so quick, and then he's still so his stamina for that size. Uh, I don't know if he was up here when I said this, but David Benavidez for total punches landed thirty-seven percent of all his punches. That's the second in all of boxing. Do you know yeah. what this is? 
Bam Rodriguez, Sorry? a flyweight. Uh -oh. Benavidez is not supposed to be that oh, damn. I love Bam Rodriguez. That yeah. much stamina and that much action. Yeah, man. Yeah, he throw a lot that of punches. That nigga stamina is insane. Hey, bro. look, man, look. Be like that. look. That's why a lot of people avoid it. That's why Canelo knows, damn, I could get stopped in front of the whole world. <laughs> Like, that, that, I was just look, thinking man, about look, something. For a guy like Canelo, bro, look, it's like I said, it's okay for you to be scared, man. But look, man, he's been a mandatory challenger for what four years? Yeah. Come on, Canelo, two years. Here, Canelo's smart. It's not about. It's about the money. The man, Canelo, has never been stopped. Yeah, for boxing, scared. Yeah, I can. So I can now? understand being, you know, the the face of the sport and being able to do whatever you want. I can understand that, but yeah. don't hold up the rest of the division that you're the undisputed champion of. See, this is my thing, though. If David Benavidez was, like, more marketable, they probably would have been took the belts from Canelo. It's, oh, wait, is, is, Mungia, is Mungia that marketable? No. no Hell no. He's not no. what I'm saying. If, if David Benavidez had, like, the name of Tank, they would have been took the belts from you feel me, Canelo. So why he fighting another? Well, he is yeah. not even famous. You gotta think, bro. Canelo <laughs> bringing a lot of fans to box. They didn't even do fifty k pay per view buys. Nina has a great point. Oh. Canelo bringing okay, a lot so, of fans okay, so to box. You think they gonna fight in May? He's Canelo not marketable. Get destroyed by some dude that yeah, you feel me. He gonna sell That's like Canelo. Yeah. So of course they gonna let Canelo hold all the belts. He gonna sell like Canelo. Yeah, they gonna let Canelo yeah, but... Canelo can bring the crowd regardless. Canelo. Look, Canelo, one way or another, Canelo is not going to have all of his belts by the end of this year. Man, well, 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 let me ask you this. It's not even about the belts, right? Boxing is not about the belts right now. Yeah. Uh, think of it. It's I about give money. Example. I give a perfect example. I made a video about this. Bill Haney said that he's willing to be the B-side in a fight against Tank Davis. He'll do a live on that tomorrow. He said it on what it is the other day. You know why? Because Tank is the money man. So yeah. Bill, money Bill man. is about money. And they really want to fight. Devin's legacy, he should be the A side, but boxing is no yeah. longer about the accumulation of belts. So Canelo, whether he lose the belts or whether he keep the belts, it don't even matter. We all want to see the Benavidez fight. Everybody, the Mexico, America, you're everybody want to see that fight, but that fight not gonna happen. And the reason that, why that, is because of this right here. It hurts my soul. Knockout ratio, yeah. thirty-seven yeah, but the problem is punches landed. Uh, great bully. You know what I mean? This one of the most dangerous boxers in the world. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five yeah. or twenty-two years old, young. KJ, you could at least, like, you keep, every yeah. time you say that, you keep crushing my host, bro. At least uh, be a little yeah. bit hopeful. Yeah, but <laughs> the belt may not matter that much so, in the grand scheme of things so today, bad, bro. but Benavidez deserves so a chance at all of them. No, nah, if you, so you watch Showbiz, y'all know who Showbiz the Dude is? Showbiz, I know. Showbiz, you know. Yeah, he, he would like that fight. David Benavidez might happen in September. No, hell no. Let, look, he will never. I mean, matter of fact, that reminds me of a video I need to do. Do you know that Canelo said that Jaime, uh, they have to have a rematch clause for the fight against Jaime Munguia? What? 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 Hey, clause? you never know. Munguia might might beat him. Who knows? Yeah, Munguia, never know. Munguia not easy, not just easy for Canelo at this age. Like Munguia uh, is going to throw more punches than Canelo. So Canelo has to get a stoppage, or it's going to have to be a robbery. That's number one. But number two, the rematch is in there because he'd rather fight Munguia twice, just like he did Triple G. That's what Canelo about. He'd, he'd rather fight somebody he knows that he could beat or that's mm -hmm. challenging twice than to fight somebody where he's truly the underdog. And he would be the underdog against Dave Benavidez. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. I don't even, even if Vegas has him as a winning favorite. Mexico don't think so, KJ. Boston knows that that's not a fight that Canelo's supposed to win. Is it all Mexico? KJ, Mexico, me Canelo, me me yeah. Mexico don't think that he's the underdog. Hmm? Mexico don't think Canelo would be the underdog if he fight Benavidez. Bro, <laughs> a lot of people know. I mean, they they gonna be thinking with their heart, but most yeah. people who know boxing knows that's not a fight that Canelo's supposed to win. Uh, his historically it's like Ali versus Foreman. Ali at that age was not supposed to be a young George Foreman. George Foreman was stepping on guys that Ali was. Bro, who, bro, what is that sound? For example, somebody got a big thing, Mike. Let me What's see. What's that? You don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. You said that George Foreman, you know, Look, when he was younger. He was, what, 25 years old when he fought Ali? Listen, listen. George Foreman was in his youth, in his prime. He was knocking out guys that Ali was competitive with, making them look like nothing. Joe yeah. Frazier. Came Down over. goes Frazier. Now, now, today, Benavidez, he stepped over Demetrius Andre. That's somebody who Canelo would have gave Canelo a run for his money. Caleb Plant. It took Canelo 11 rounds to really uh get Caleb out of there. 
Caleb Plant, he was he was in survival mode and asked for a big ass twenty three foot ring just so he could make it to the twelfth round against Dave Benavidez. His face was all bloodied up. It wasn't even yeah. competitive after you know the third or fourth round. Like Benavides is taking the guys who Canelo was com uh, competitive with or would have been competitive with and making them look like they're not on his level. So we got the same dynamic that we had all those years ago. A young line versus the old line, and the old line isn't supposed to win. The only difference is I don't think Canelo got the balls that Ali got. And that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm serious. How many people had the balls that Ali had? Ali was fighting. Not many. Before. Not many. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ali was 39 years old. Ali had elephant fight. balls. You know, still trying to fight top competition. Like how many no. Yeah, he didn't he didn't have to fight Ernie Shavers and he did. And that motherfucker yeah. was dangerous. Was fights that hey, fight. man. hey look, hey, hey, what did George Foreman say about Ernie Shavers? If you find a box at Ernie Shavers, Don't you think Ali had what? Ali has several fights with his wives. I gotta say wives because someone was different. Right. That yeah. told him, please don't do it. Please exactly. don't do it. And yeah, one you got was people crying thing that everybody knew that Ali was, was going. And Corner didn't want him to fight Sonny Liston, his team rather. When he the first fight with Sonny Liston, they were like, "Oh man, please let's wait a he's, little longer." He's gonna run he over. Said, beat him. I was got balls of steel, bro. bro. Like, but I'm not. I can't like, even fault Canelo for not having the the balls of Ali. Like Ali was a special human being. I'm not sorry, bro, my ego. Hey, look, it just whack. I mean, it just whack for boxing. KJ, KJ, as a black man, I'm sorry, bro. My ego. Look, if I go, if I lose, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I, I look. I don't give a damn. I rather be. I rather be scared to be a coward. Oh no, I, do. I ain't gonna lie. If I was Canelo at super middleweight and Dave Benavidez, came, my ego would be to too much, bro. Yeah, my I'm ego. Fighting. My ego will be too much. I don't. Why are you in the sport? What's the? If that's the case, retire. <laughs> yeah, but we do that. Don't do it, Don't tell me how to make hey, my look, money. Man, that's the worst thing. That's the worst <laughs> then, thing yeah, you can call a boxer. Yeah, Canelo bro. Look a like, you telling me how to make my money? I didn't make 300, 400 million. Who are you to tell me anything? You know what yeah. I mean? But at the end of the day, uh, money aside, yeah. Uh, at, if what what is your pride as a fighter that somebody really got you no, ducking, running the high? That's what I'm like, saying, bro. Yeah, like, I, you, like, I'm a, that reminds I'm a, me. If I wake up and I'm like, oh no, I'm afraid to fight this fighter. I'm gonna retire. I'm like, okay, this sport not for me no more. I I know, man, man. Like I said, JJ, bro, the worst thing JJ that just reminded me of something. I, I was listening to something that Pauli Malinaji was saying a while back, comparing like Ryan Garcia to Conor McGregor, saying like, you may make a lot of money, but you gotta. Face the fact that you get your ass whooped for money, like a prostitute gets smacked around for money. <laughs> what the fuck? He lost one fight. God you damn. said that. <laughs> That's my first time here. I didn't know you said that. Fight. Look, a lot of people be honest with you. A lot of people just hating on Ryan because Ryan is able to make all his money. Boxers be hating yeah, because most boxers don't get paid. That's hating. That's hating right there. Because he only saw Ryan Garcia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh no, man! Look, hey, look, man! I'm never gonna fight a dude. You know what I'm saying? But no, um, but no, no, no. I'm never gonna fight. I didn't bring that up. Money, but the one thing about I don't. Ryan Garcia, but yeah, yeah. The but, one, uh, the, I've been, the one like, thing that I didn't like about Garcia about a fighter's pride. Oh, I gotta talk one at a time. My bad. No, if it's one thing I don't like about Ryan Garcia is that you know he was with Canelo's team, you know. Uh, 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 in his trade at Eddie, you know, that other stuff, you know, he had everything. I, I had high hopes for Ryan Garcia early in his career. I thought he was going to be the next one, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I guess he was dealing with mental problems. I mean, he doing too much of opening his mouth then. Yeah. And I see, and I see no growth in your development as a fighter. You had everything handed to you and you just be on that BS. No, 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 no. Uh, you don't gotta have high hopes for Ryan. Ryan may have no, I did early in his career. So Ryan had forty million dollar paydays. So as a boxer, yeah. man, successful. He he only lost one time. A lot of people only hating on him like other fighters because most fighters, boxing or MMA, don't get paid. No, most they don't. Fighters, no. I'll give you an example. In in like one division, let's say like welterweight division, there's two thousand people almost in that welterweight division. We only hey, Jay, you being nice, bro. You being nice. The reason why they're hating on Ryan, Ryan never held a title. In his in his professional career, in yeah. in 2023, he made 41 million dollars. Man, that's, that's boxing, bro. Man, they gotta get over that shit. But, 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 but that's where the jealousy is coming from. But Don, Drew, who fought is that? Do you understand that all? Yeah, exactly. man, they gotta get over that's that. That's where bro. all the hate is coming from. It has nothing to do with nothing else. You know, Paulie Maggiali running his mouth. He probably made one million in his whole career. Right. So, but, but, but Don, Drew, 
Don't you know all of these guys have access to the internet so they could be doing what Ryan is doing? Bro, mm -hmm. but I don't understand. First of all, my John is a hater, bro. First of all, you made over six figures. You made the type of money that average Americans will never see in their life. Stop crying. Mm -hmm. Crying. Wait, who was crying? They was talking about uh, Garcia. They keep hating. I'm all like, bro, they keep calling him an internet fighter and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, bro, let's not. Let's not. I didn't bring that up to trash on Ryan Garcia. KJ was just saying something about, you know, a fighter's pride and how they can live with themselves without really proving themselves against top opposition. Like Canelo, even at some point in the later years, if he doesn't fight Benavidez, he's going to have to think about that. He's not gonna fight him, bro. It ain't even about Benavidez, you know but it's... you know who gonna not, never let him off the hook? That damn um, who the who the Mexican that Floyd that uh that that almost Castillo Castillo. No, the one that almost Castillo is deceased, brother. It's Castillo. Oh no, Castillo. I'm thinking of uh the other guy. You're not talking about Madonna, are you? No, no, no. The one that almost Marquez? killed Pacquiao. The one that knocked Pacquiao. Oh, Marquez. 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 Oh, you're talking about Juan uh, Marquez. Marquez. Never let Canelo. If if Canelo don't fight Benavidez. Marquez is gonna be going viral every five years, bringing up yeah, Canelo was great, but he did fight Benavidez. He always <laughs> in the news talking about he would never let Canelo let that shit down if he don't fight Benavidez. So that's okay, one okay. Yeah, but KJ, if, his senior. But, but KJ, if you don't fight Benavidez, can, can can you really can we really say that Canelo? Can we still say that Canelo um is the greatest Mexican fighter of all time? No, no Chavez Senior. Yes. He is. Don't fight Benavidez, he's never going to take. He's never going to take Canelo. All right, I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. No. No, look, nah. y'all missing the point though, bro. But for this was a big thing. Canelo said he wanted B B David Benavidez to be great, like he want another oh, Mexican fighter great like him. Basically, he's saying he want to pass the torch. And there's only one way to, to pass be honest, him. bro. Fight him. Taryn Crawford deserved that fight more than David Benavidez. To be honest with y'all, no, you crazy as hell. What, what the? Fuck? You know, you know, you know, the door, the door, did, right? the door, bro. April Fools is a little. That's a little. It's it's next month, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, what Bud? What Bud? What else Bud Crawford got to do? <laughs> he's, he's stupid. <laughs> Listen, Terrence Crawford jumping up to fight Canelo. I don't know if uh he even had the chance of winning. I'm tired of seeing dudes he's jump not, up. He's, he's not gonna beat him, man. You know that. Why can't we? Do you know why Terrence and Arrow was so dope? You know why they why they made so much money? Why it was historical? Because they was in the same weight division, they were champions in their weight division. The shit was fair. It wasn't like we was gonna be the fight was gonna be over and we was gonna say, "Well, Terrence is too big." No, it was what, what it was supposed to be: two men, the same weight class, getting it on. They both was accomplished men. They both were champions. I want to see Canelo fight David Benavidez. They both super middleweight. David Benavidez has been a super middleweight for years. He's been a mandatory for multiple years. I'm tired of seeing dudes jump up two, three weight divisions. Man, that shit is played out. <laughs> not you, not everybody's Roy Jones Jr. I know why, I know why bro. PC wanted though, because he's thirty six years old and he what, wanted that. He wanted that second. But uh, you know big what Floyd told him? Floyd told him. He, Floyd tried to get uh, uh, Crawford killed. Floyd told Crawford, and first off, it's fool's gold because we already know this is not how it works. But PBC, they'll hang that carrot in front of your face and say, "Well, if you fight Benavidez, then you get Canelo." Floyd told Crawford, "Fight Benavidez, get Canelo." Like, bro, nah, you like, tripping? You hell? tripping? He tripping. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, PC I, he he there. told him that for real. They trying to make yeah, him retire on the oh, Nah, Crawford. Floyd bugging, bro. He bugging. Even if Crawford was able to somehow beat a true light heavyweight in Benavidez, he still wouldn't get a fight with Canelo. Make it even worse. Like, hell no. Hey, fight Caleb Plant. Oh, 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 fight fight Demetrius Andre. You, look, man, look, man, look. Man, in the man. dream world where you can make dreams come true in your mind, in, in the world, if Terrence Crawford were to beat David Benavidez, it would make Canelo even look more of a punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Canelo is being real, bro. David to be great, bro. That's how I know the fight. And then when Bill was said, he got Benavidez over Canelo. That's how I knew that whole that the fight went happening then when Bibble said that shit. Bruh, Bibble spar with Benavidez, and I keep saying it. Look at the look on Bibble face in that damn picture. He's looking at Bibble like, yeah, this motherfucker, this, him right here, this, this is the next guy. Benavidez putting hands on Bibble, and Benavidez about to fight that old Alexander dude to get the winner of Bertha Biev and Bibble. So Benavidez is going to show y'all, I think he's great, but he's going to show people that he's really great, man. But on that note, I'm going to get I think he's man. great. I do. My phone on less than 10%. I want to thank everybody coming up. Wickedy, 
Levi, yeah. even though you're eating them tips. Okay. KJ, one more question. One more question, KJ, before Don't you go. Judah, Nina, Savo, Boxy Dragon. All right, what's up, Wiki? What's the last question? That guy, that oh, blonde KJ, guy. You got to train, bro. Wait. I got to train. You know what I did today, bro? No, I said we got to train. Oh, we got we got to train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I be train. in the, uh, the Lord gym. But hold up, Wiki, ask the last question. I'm going to link up with you, Savo. Yeah. Ask the last question, Wiki. That blonde guy beside you, he killed someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dada said. I think the dude name was Maxim Dadashe. He killed him. It's a real it's wow, so, like he's a, so he a killer for real. He's unalived him. Unalived him. <laughs> yeah. What brain that damage? Was a situation. They blamed it on the ref, but it is what it is. What, 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 what was it? Blamed? It what was it? Brain damage? damage? To be honest with you, I always look at it. If I were to die in a ring, it's better than being a vegetable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Oh, yeah. Pritchard Cologne. Forget that. You know, you know. Oh man, G -man. I feel bad for him, bro. But That's uh G man right, tragic. Uh, uh I'm up out of here, man. Y'all have a good night. All right, All right. take All right. care, y'all. We did our thing tonight. Peace. Peace.